Well, good afternoon to you. Monday again now, isn't it? Second or something. I think it is the second of uh, November now. And, uh, well, they say we're going in lockdown again on Thursday, but I don't like that old word lockdown. It ain't a lockdown or like that. But uh, we will be all right. We've got to keep thing. I don't said to my wife this morning, we've got to be thinking about all these doctors, nurses, the drivers, and well, thousands and thousands of them in this country doing all this voluntary work and people are of course are paid to support us and keep us safe as much as we can we know there's lots of other people that are poorly and 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 need help and i well i pray for all of them that uh, you know this will be resolved but it, we will get over it and um well i'm just looking forward to the i say the new year and one thing and another but um, just everybody well stay safe let's do what we can do to uh, feel safe and uh it's a worrying time. I worry like everybody else worry, but um, and of course there's lots of people that we know. Lots of people. It's nice that we, people can go out and support people that are on their own. There's not only elderly people like myself. I'm, well, I, I mean I got my wife, but um, there are people on their own. But also there's youngsters on their own, and they need a bit of reassurance, and they don't want to see or hear about the well the upset and the fear that. We don't know what they're thinking, and so we'd have turned the TV off when, you know, we've got to listen to some things. I read the paper a bit, but it's going to be all right. That's the thing. Stay positive, is what I say. Stay positive. It'll be all right. Now, I'm going to do another one here day by Liz Arman. You might have heard it before. I don't know, but there we are. I hope you enjoy it. She's writing a letter again to Deep, just says, Dear All. I thought how it be, was time once again to put pen to paper and leave you all now we doing down here. Did you know that we had a lovely revival up to chapel? We've been singing all the handsome Sankey and Moody hymns every night and some of the preaching have been bram uplifting, I tell you. Mind you, one or two of them have been a bit long-winded. In fact, one of them, I wouldn't mention no names mine, went on so long that I was getting cramp in my leg from sitting on the hard pews. He told us that we got to be like little, like candles and shine out in the world. Well, he'd been preaching for nearly an hour, repeating himself over and over again, till Uncle jo Job couldn't contain himself no longer and shouted out, if you are a candle shining out in the world, then it's time you were snuffed out. Well, he left that pulpit in a brawl off and then been back since. You'll be glad to know that dear child have passed all the exams. I told Mr. Jones, you know, that's the old gentleman that I do for three hours a week. I said to him, I don't know who she turns after, because neither her man nor dad are no scholars. He said a very funny thing to me. He said, Well, you know, it's all in her makeup. It's all to do with her genes. I've been puzzling my brain ever since. Well, the dear child ain't old enough to use mascara and lipstick and such. And as for genes, there ain't no, none in no genes in our family. Plenty of Bess's and Martha's and Sarah's, but no genes. I got landed for one of their old newfangled coffee mornings the other day, you know. You go in other people's houses and drink their coffee and pay so much, then they give the money to charity. Well, that's good. So now is my turn. We all agreed that we would only serve light refreshments, so I made a get sheath of heavy cake. I've been a bit concerned about the coffee, as me and Uncle Alfred only drink tea. I thought I would be nebbly and ask Mrs. from next door, even though I can't bite her. She'd have make me sick. She's always bragging on about what she got. She said to me, all I am mighty like, cause she would fancy herself. I suppose you'll be serving real coffee. I've got a large percolator you can borrow. Well, I thought, yes, I know you would. It to match the rest of me. So I said very civil like, of course, I'm serving real coffee and I've got everything under control, thank you very much. Then I went straight out to the co-op and bought a get bottle of camp. Come to find out, on the day, everybody was dry as goals and wanted tea. Now, I've got a get bottle of camp coffee on the shelf going to waste. It was Granny Liz's 90th birthday last Sunday. The daughters asked everyone in to have a drop of tea with her. They'd done some handsome spread 
The table was groaning. The minister from the chapel came to wish her a very happy birthday, but she made the poor woman look like foolish. I believe she done it on purpose, because she did like to stir things up a bit. You see, they made a few bottles of ginger wine to drink her elf, and just as the minister was raising his glass of wine to his lips, she said, I hope that isn't the wine that the mouse got drowned in when I was fermenting the crock. And to make matters worse, she went on, you should have seen it. There he was floating on his back, a little belly blot up like a barrel. I will say, though, that the parson was a hero. He clunked down every drop in his glass, but he looked rather pale afterwards, I tell you. Ellen, the little maid crossing the street, brought back a present from her holidays for her cat, Fluff. She did think the world of Fluff. It was a toy mouse filled with stuff called catnip, Ellen said. That will make her lively and frisky. And frisky is the word. I'd never seen nothing like it. There was our old Fluff who hadn't twitched a whisker at a tom for five years, rolling around and looking to go out at night. Uncle Alfred was very impressed. But when he said, do you think this year catnip would do any good for humans? I decided time to fire the mouse out. I can't have Uncle Alfred getting any ideas at his time in life. We got to think of his blood pressure. Now, my handsomes, I must bring this letter to a close. Uncle Alfred, to send his kind regards, give the baby a kiss from both of us. Thank you very much.